and a half months after astronaut Edward White made this historic walk in space, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration will launch two more men into space. For veteran astronaut Gordon Cooper, whose 22-orbit flight ended Project Mercury, Gemini 5 is an extension of his exploration into longer and more advanced space flight. And as command pilot of the eight-day Gemini 5 flight, he will record the world's longest space voyage. For astronaut Charles Conrad, the Gemini 5 mission will culminate three years of long, hard training. Since entering the space program in September of 1962, hours of classroom study, rigorous training in various parts of the world, the exhaustive simulations day after day have qualified him for his first trip into space. Despite the duration of the record-breaking flight and the extensive experiments planned, Gemini 5 will not actually be new to the man circling the Earth. Ground simulations run time and time again, acquaint the men with every conceivable problem. Each phase of the flight plan has been duplicated many times here on Earth, duplicated so that the men react instinctively to any situation. With centrifuge training, the men become familiar with the gravitational stresses they can expect during liftoff and re-entry. Survival training provides them with usable knowledge in the event they are forced to land in hostile surroundings. Water egress training provides the astronauts with complete know-how on leaving the spacecraft in rolling seas. And the hours spent in the Gemini mission simulator familiarize the astronauts with each button and switch so that reaction is spontaneous without the loss of valuable time. Although the job weightlessness, techniques for later rendezvous missions will also be developed. A 76-pound box-like device called the Rendezvous Evaluation Pod to be used as a substitute for the Agena target vehicle will be carried on the Gemini 5 mission. Midway through the second revolution, explosive charges will eject the Rendezvous Pod and data from the pod will be transmitted back to the Gemini 5 spacecraft. From this transmitted data, the astronauts can calculate the maneuvers necessary to dock in space, although there will be no docking during this flight. Another experiment will include photography. Pictures will be taken of space objects under different lighting and background conditions, and areas of Earth will be photographed for orientation purposes. Fuel cells will be aboard Gemini 5 and receive extensive testing as to their feasibility for onboard power. These cells convert fuel into electricity and actually manufacture their own power rather than store it as does a battery. The fuel for the cells in this case is liquid hydrogen and oxygen. In the visual acuity experiment, the astronauts will attempt to recognize large rectangular patterns arranged at two locations. At Carnarvon, Australia, these designs are made of white shell, and at Laredo, Texas, the rectangular layout is composed of styrofoam. At various intervals, these patterns will be rearranged so as to give the astronauts a different set of rectangles to observe. This air-to-ground visual survey will provide information as to the ability of astronauts to pick out and identify certain ground areas or locations. The years of planning in America's space program, experiences of Project Mercury, Project Gemini, are once again placing two men in the quest for knowledge beyond the Earth. Two men, one machine, will make this voyage. Mankind needs to know, and answers will come with the eight days of Gemini 5.